Well, the OPM breach really is only one of many breaches that we've seen in the last several years, and the trend seems to be it's getting worse, not better. All of us need to put more pressure on government and industry to make, make these systems better. They're just not working very well. In our homes, our personal life, security has to be a focus. You know, are my doors locked to my house? Well, are the openings locked to my organization? Uh, I just think security is vitally important and uh, without a focus on it, uh, we're not going to have success. On continuous monitoring, we're not there yet. We don't have the instrumentation of all the networks, of all the organizations to really be on top of it and spot the abnormal behavior to identify insider threats. So there are insider threat programs, industry has them now well, as government organizations, but I would say they're early on. Uh, there's got to be a lot more rigor put into those, a lot more processes activated. And connecting those up with IT providers or IT maintainers, both the government people responsible for that and the industry who is operating that and coming up with ideas to do that in a way that gets the right kind of data to those who are responsible for investigating any type uh, of unusual activity. The best cases, that's a really good seamless process. In the cases where there is a communication going on between your IT sustainer or service provider and the people responsible for insider threat detection, then you're not going to be as effective. It's not just about technology, it really is about uh, the real effective processes and communication between people. You know, there's a lot of hard work going on that across government and industry is engaged in that too. The Intelligence and National Security Alliance, an organization called INSA, is very involved with this. I've been working with them for the last several years. Charlie Allen, who is a uh, retired senior uh, leader from the IC, along with Kathy Fearson, lead the security task force for INSA. And they've done a number of good things, helping the discussion between government and between industry to look at things like how long it takes to transfer clearances for contractors from one agency to another agency. We find sometimes that it takes months to do that when it really should only take a couple of days. One of the things that INSA tried to promote with industry is having industry provide just data on how many days it was actually taking. Uh, for their people to move across. Government isn't looking at that data, and that's one of the problems too. We have to manage those kind of processes in a way that allows people to look at the hard data, what's going on, and look at the cost of it. And we need to keep up with technology. We really need to master that technology and not let it master us. I think that's what's really going on right now. I used to say, without security, there is no intelligence. I think today, from where I'm sitting, without security, there is no success in business, there is no success in government, there's certainly no success in national security. It really starts with that personnel security. Do we know the people that we're bringing in and are given a clearance? Are, are we continuously monitoring because things can change? They can get approached, they can inadvertently do something wrong? The information technology that they're using, which has changed so much the last 20 years, we've really got to get a better handle on how to secure that. That's a really hard problem, but we've got some really smart people, and I know we're focused on that.